just like to offer a big shout out to Touchdown Digital, the sponsor of this week's video. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Glenn Selling. You're watching Sniper Photography. Today, I'm perched on the edge of a cliff here in the Blue Mountains of New South Wales. Visibility is down to about 20 metres, um, which, is, which isn't all that great. Uh, it's quite cool here, what, 10 degrees. Um, but the wind's dropped off and the rain has stopped. But today, I want to talk to you about using a tilt-shift lens. Now, tilt-shift lenses are traditionally known for you to, to be used for architectural photography and product photography. Well, I actually use one for my commercial photography, but every now and again, I bring it out into the landscape, and this is the lens here. It's a 24mm f3.5 tilt-shift lens. Now, um, at the end of this video, I'll talk you about the pros and cons of using a tilt-shift lens, but just today I'm going to show you what you can achieve by using the tilt on a tilt shift lens. And um, I'll explain to you why I do it and how to do it. Now, if you ever thought about giving tilt shift lenses a try, maybe this video is for you. So what we'll do, I framed up my shot. Now, <clears throat> this is a fixed focal length 24 millimeter lens. And at the present stage, I haven't done any tilt and I haven't done any shift up or down or sideways. So what I do, I focus um, in the middle of the frame. So what I've done, I've focused on the middle section here, then I've got the background. So what we do, we focus, this is when you're using a tilt shift lens, you focus in the middle of the ground, so I've got my focus point right in the centre, now you can only do this on the live view screen. A couple of things, a couple of caveats with tilt shift lenses. You need to use a tripod. You can't do this handheld. And you need to use your live view on the back of your camera, of your screen. You won't be able to do this through the viewfinder. Also to, to my knowledge, and I'm probably 99.99% correct on this one, is that all tilt shift lenses are all manual focus lenses. There's no auto focus in them. So what we do, I've got my focus point in the centre, which is in the middle of the scene just there. So what I'll do, I'll focus. It's very foggy today, so it's a bit hard. So I'm focusing. So what I do, then I enlarge it. See how I am there. That's good. I get back out of that. Right. Now I'm not touching my focus. That's it. I don't have to touch my focus. Now this is where the tilt comes into it. So what I do, I move my focus point down into the bottom of the screen. In other words, my foreground. Now I know that my foreground is going to be um, out of focus. So I'll drop it down to the bottom. Now I enlarge that. And yes, I'm out of focus. So what I do now is I tilt the lens down by about 1.5 degrees. Now there's a knob on the side of this where I just turn it and I just bring it down until my foreground is in focus. Just there. Right, so I've tilted the lens about 1.5 degrees down. Now that tells me that my foreground is in focus. Let's move the focus point back up to the centre. That's also in focus. And let's check the background. That's in focus. So I've only, ever, I've only moved the focus point once, and that's when I initially focused. So what I've effectively done... I've laid the plane of focus down like that. So along here is the ground. This is my focal plane. So as I tilt the lens, I'm tilting the focal plane and I'm stretching the focal plane out. This way you get technical sharpness. There's a big difference in photography between technical sharpness and optical sharpness. And I'll do a video on optical sharpness at another time. But this principle 
is called the Schimflig principle, and I won't talk to you about that either here because I'll be here all day, but I'll put a link to the Schimflig principle when using tilt shift lenses at the, in the description box below this video. So effectively what I'm doing, I've got this arc here. So in between here is the focal point, the focal plane, but I'm stretching the focal plane like that, okay? So it stretches it out. Now I've just taken this shot at 3.5, f3.5. Now you can't do that with a normal lens because otherwise I'd be a blurry foreground, midground wouldn't be too bad and the background would be completely washed out. So by applying that tilt, I'm stretching like that, the focal plane further out. Fantastic lens to use, and they're great for landscape photography, especially if you want technical sharpness all the way through the image. Now, I can print that image and put it on the side of a bus, and it'll be pin sharp. Where now you might think, well, Glenn, why don't you just we can just close down, close down to f16? But that is a, a real myth, actually, because f16, what happens is you're up like that and there's imaginary line between the, my fingertips, that's where your focus plane stops. So anything after that is going to be out of focus. So this is why every now and again I bring the tilt shift lens out and use it because it's a really good piece of equipment. It is challenging to use, but once you nail it, the results are just phenomenal. Now, <clears throat> there's other things you can do with a tilt shift lens. Um, you can do panoramas. And panoramas with a tilt shift lens is also fantastic because we're not actually moving, and I'll explain this in a moment, when we're doing a panorama, we're not moving the camera, well, we're moving the camera and lens like that. This is why you get that bowed effect in your images when you go to stitch them in Lightroom Photoshop. But with a tilt shift lens, the camera stays positioned still, and I'm moving the lens from left to right. I'm moving the lens, not the camera, but the lens, and I'll show you that in a moment. But other than that, that's how you, we use a tilt shift lens. We um, focus in the middle and then we tilt it down until the foreground comes into focus. And that means that my foreground, my midground, and my background is in focus by applying that little bit of tilt. Um, yeah, I'm at 1.5. And if you were to look at the side of the lens, you'll see that it's tilted like this. A really good piece of gear to use and but um, I'll talk about the pros and cons um, in a moment but let me show you how I do panoramas with a tilt shift lens okay another good thing another good thing with tilt shift lenses is panoramas now usually um, when we photograph panoramas with our camera and lens we tend to move the camera and lens at the same time well with a tilt shift lens you don't have to do that and um, Usually we go like this, one, two, three, four, five, six. But you don't have to do that with the tilt shift lens. What I have to do with this is I have to shift the lens from left to right. So there's a knob up here that I turn and it moves the lens so that you'll see it moving. So what we do, we focus in the middle like I did when I was doing the um, the portrait orientation shot so I know I'm in focus so I don't touch the focus anymore so I just push that right to the left first thing I do is take a photo of my hand right like so then I take the shot then I put the lens back into the center Take the shot and then move it to the right. You'll see how I'm moving the lens to the right. Take the shot. Take one more photo of my, my right hand. The reason why I do that is so I know where my sequence of images start when I go to put them in Lightroom Photoshop. So that is how you do a panorama with a tilt shift lens. Now Lightroom and Photoshop will love you for that because it doesn't have to work so hard to get rid of that convergence, that, that bow effect, because you don't get that with a tilt shift lens because I'm moving the lens across the center of the plane of focus. Um, as I said, they are, they are a technical lens, but by geez, once you come to grips with something like this, 
it really is a fantastic thing to use. Um, so yeah, look, that's, uh, that's how you use a tilt shift lens. Um, I will turn this around again and I'll show you. Um, the tilt mechanism on this. Now, where's my button? There it is. We turn the lens around that way. Okay, so what we do is basically all we do here is we tilt the lens down. Okay, so because there's so many axes, axis movements with these lenses and that's why they're expensive and more about the cost in a moment so to show you the front on version of the image that I've taken um, I've focused in the middle again and all I do I bring my focal point down to the bottom of the frame I'm looking at my foreground and I just adjust my tilt you can see the lens tilting now that's telling me that my foreground is in focus I tilt it back up we will check the top part, and that's good. So by tilting the lens down, I'm stretching the focal point out. Now you might think, well, why can't I focus stack? Well, you can, but focus stacking has its issues. Now, I know a lot of people focus stack for no apparent reason. I, I, I don't know why they do that. Um, it all depends on the scene, of course. Now, focus stacking sometimes doesn't work because you mightn't get it right where the sequence is where you need to be focusing. Plus, it's time consuming. But with a tilt shift lens, you don't need to focus stack. You, you just don't need to because the lens is being tilted down and you're stretching that focal plane further out, which enables you, you, to, enables you to get technical sharpness. So that's how you use a tilt shift lens. Now, pros and cons. Well, I'll talk to you about the pros and cons. There's a nice little seat up there. I might sit up there. The fog's starting to roll in, so I'll go up there and I'll get back to you very shortly about the pros and cons of using a tilt shift lens. Okay, let's talk about the pros and cons of using a tilt shift lens. Well, I'll talk about the the cons first and I think the major one is the cost you're looking up to about four thousand dollars for one of these lenses you can get them from anywhere from two grand up to about four thousand dollars if you're a Canon and Nikon shooter Canon and Nikon or Canon and Nikon make their own tilt shift lenses but there also is an alternative called the Samyang um, 24 millimeter f 3.5 tilt shift which is very very good for about just under two thousand dollars now that's a lot of money to spend if you're only going to use it three or four times a year. But um, if you're planning on really technical sharpness and you don't want to focus stack and you're worried about F16, F11 not working for you with your images and you print a lot, especially if you print big images um, the size of probably A3+, plus, maybe more, well then you need technical sharpness all the way through. So it's the cost that prohibits a lot of people from getting into tilt shift lens photography. Because when you think about it, there's a lot of mechanical things in this lens. There's, it's all manual. You see all these buttons here, right? And you can see all the, the levers because it twists and turns and carries on. Um, because that's how tilt shift lens works, work. Um, so the cost is a bugbear for a lot of people. The second thing is that they're heavy. This is an extremely heavy lens because there's a lot of glass elements in it and a lot of metal and moving parts. And as, as I said, you've got all these knobs and buttons and levers to turn and twist and pull. So, and that's why they're expensive. They're expensive to make because it's a different production line with the manufacturing of these lenses. So um, they are expensive and they are very heavy. So if you're a, a mirrorless shooter, uh, traditionally mirrorless cameras are a lot lighter, a lot smaller, you'll know when you put one of these babies on the end of it because it is a beast. Now this is a Canon 5D Mark IV and, and this is a heavy camera plus this is a heavy unit. So the size, the cost and the weight is probably a bugbear for a lot of people, which I understand. Um, another thing too is that if you are a Sony um, shooter, uh, Fuji, Olympus, 
you really haven't got any option, really. You, the only option you have is to get the Samyang 24mm f3.5 tilt shift, which is a very, very good lens. I own Samyang lenses and their optics are outstanding. So that's the only real bugbear if you're not a Canon or Nikon shooter, where you can buy the Canon and Nikon um, tilt shift lenses, or um, you will have to buy um, <coughs> a Samyang for, for your particular mount if you're not shooting Nikon or Canon. So that's probably a downside of it. Uh, the pros, the pros of using a tilt shift lens. Well, basically, as I've said all through this video, is the technical sharpness that you can gather um, with very small or very, very large apertures. Like I just took that shot at f3.5 and everything is pin sharp. You just can't do that with a normal camera, even at f16, you're not gonna be able to do it. Um, another good thing is how you do panoramas, as I showed you. You don't move the camera like this. You move the lens from left to right. So the camera stays stationary. Um, what else is there? There's um, the technicalities of it um, and the image quality that you get by using a tilt shift lens is absolutely phenomenal. I think to have this in your camera bag would probably be overkill. Um, but if you're dead set on technical sharpness, perfect sharpness, then I suggest you look at buying a tilt shift lens. Now, forget about buying one of these second hand, you won't get one, um, because people that have got them will never sell them, because we use them. Um, you're better off renting one to see if you like tilt shift lenses. Now, also on these lenses, you've got all these, you can see it, all these markings, that's the degrees in which you tilt the lens. Um, basically, they are, they are a technical lens, but the results you get from them are really, really good. And I, as I said, I don't use it all that much, but when I'm going to print some big images and that image I just took, I'm gonna to do it in monochrome black and white because it's very foggy here and I'm just, I'm sitting in the clouds. I'm up over a thousand feet here. Um, it's a bit chilly, but yeah, look, the pros of a, of a tilt shift lens, I think they don't really outweigh the cons. Um, because they are a challenging lens to use. But once you come to grips with how to use a tilt shift lens, well then, by geez, your, your images just just accelerate in quality. I mean, if you're a photographer that puts your images on social media, Facebook, Instagram, well then you don't need technical sharpness. It's not until you start making your images really, really big and you're examining them, examining them thoroughly that you will notice how soft the background is. So before I go, I'll just tell you exactly about that, that principle. So basically, when we focus, that's the, the, foot, the, the ground. This is the plane of focus up here. So as I tilt the lens, I'm extending my plane of focus. Okay, so anything in here is in focus. If I do this at F16, that's where it stops. It stops there. And anything behind that is soft. This is why we use tilt shift lenses. Um, they're great if you're, another pro is that if you're photographing a landscape and there's an old barn or an old building, how many images have you seen of people taking photos of buildings and they look like they're gonna fall over, right? Because that's the converging parallel lines. With a tilt shift lens, you can also move this lens up or down like that, as well as this way, as well as that way. So when you're photographing a building, um, you can shift it up or down like that and that'll keep everything straight. So that works well with architectural components of a landscape image. So that's a video there on using a tilt shift lens. As I said, I use it half a dozen times a year, but I do use them professionally, especially for um, product photography when everything has to be perfectly sharp. But no F16 needed with these lenses, um, no focus stacking, focus stacking needed with a tilt shift lens. You just work out your tilt, where to focus, you focus once and you're done. So let me know what you think about these, this, uh, this video on these lenses, these tilt shift lenses. Have you ever thought about using one? Um, you really don't know about it? 
Well, I hope this video helps you make up your mind. So thanks for joining me here today at Sniper Photography. I'm going to take a few more shots and I'm going to head back to the car and grab a coffee. It's getting quite cold here now. So until next time, as I always say, be nice to yourself, family and friends. But most of all, you keep shooting, keep smiling. Bye for now.